Hey, what's up? I'm Terrence M, and I stream Slay the Spire on Twitch. I mostly play Ascension 20, and I have one of the highest win rates on pretty much all the characters, with my silent win rate being around 50, 52% over 50 games. And that's the character that I want to talk about today. Uh, I'm doing a tier list series for the Act 1 cards for all the characters, just to give you a good baseline and just foundation for your runs. Uh, first up, let's get into it. Act 1. So we get into Act 1. What are the first things that you really need to think about when you get to Act 1? Well, obviously, it's elites and campfires. That's what you're trying to maximize. Trying to get as many elites and fires. More specifically, you're trying to get as many relics and upgrades as you can. Upgraded cards are a lot better than unupgraded cards, and relics help give you a direction and increase your power level by a lot. Uh, also, fires can help you with things like... Um, Resting for the Scrapoos event or the uh, Take 20 upgrade to event, Shining Light or something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, very, very good for those two things. So let's talk more specifically about the elites because the fires, you just like upgrade whatever card is your highest priority upgrade at the time for whatever you need to solve or your rest, and you kind of take that as it goes. But for the elites, you actually have a lot more say in preparing for them. The so three elites, Gremlin Ob, three sentries, and Lagavulin. And to like a smaller degree, but also pretty relevant in your planning for like how you plan for these elites as well, there's the act one bosses. So, going into these fights, you're preparing for these, you really want to fight as many as you can, so you want to make your deck as good at fighting these as possible, and then as good as fighting whatever boss you have after that. And let's bring up the cards that are just, like, good almost all the time. These are going to be at the top of this tier list, that I'll show right after this. Uh, these cards are always just like, you're happy playing this, the, any of these cards pretty much against any of these fights, outside of like, Endless Agony against Guardian, kind of. But you're fine playing with the first two turns. After that, it's a little sketchy, but all these cards are good in all these fights, all the time. Very, very good. Like, not very situational at all. Take them. And then... There's cards that are really, really good against most of these fights, but can be a little more situational. So there's Terror, which is the nuts against everything, except for Sentry, that's really bad against Sentries. And it can not be good against Slime Boss, but it is mostly good against Slime Boss. There's uh, Noxious Fumes, which is really, really bad against Knob. Knob is like a... 3-4 turn fight, and Noxious Fumes is pretty slow to get started. It'll be about a strike or like 6-7 damage, maybe. So yeah, not really what you're looking for in the Gremlin Knob fight, but absolutely amazing in all the other 5 fights. And there's Masterful Stab, which is absolutely amazing in the Knob and Sentries fight. And, well, absolutely amazing in the Nob and Lagavulin fight. Okay in the Sentries fight if you get it early enough. And then definitely falls off later. Really bad against both Hexa and Guardian, but really, really good against Slime Boss. And it's weighted a little bit better, being better against the Elites to give you, like, time to snowball or whatever. And then there's Catalyst, which is really, really bad against Nob. It's way too slow, it relies on you. It's a skill and it relies on you hitting your poison, which are also skills for the most part. On a earlier turn, it's really hard to get debuffs on sentries. It's amazing against Lock Vulan, of course. Amazing against Guardian, amazing against Hexagos. Okay against uh, Slime Boss, and then kind of scales like 
obviously amazingly into the rest of the run for you once you make it past Act 1. But it's one of those cards where it's like, you're not sure that you really want it at the beginning with Gremlin Knob and Sentries being an issue. And uh, last but not least here, we have uh, Wole Plans, which is okay-ish against Knob. Really, really good against Sentries and um, Lagavulin. Really, really good against Guardian and Hexagus. And then okay slash good against um, Slime Boss. To go more into these, uh, like, okay, good, bad kind of ratings that I'm throwing out for the cards right now. Let's pull this up. Let's get rid of these. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong one. Get rid of these and bring up this. These are kind of most of the cards that I'm going to be having in the, like, good, in the, like, first two, three tiers of the cards I'm saying. All the cards that were in that first row of cards are mostly going to be the, like, tier one, which is the least situational, and then as the tiers go lower, the cards become more and more situational. But there's a lot of these cards, like Backstab and, um, where is it? There's Backstab, Dash, there's... Backstab and Dash, which are good against pretty much all of these all the time. There's Predator, which is really, really good against most of these. And then, yeah, it's kind of just good against everything as well. And then there's things like Escape Plan, where it's like good against everything, but really, really bad against Knob. And there's, I don't know, the like Quick Slash and Dagger Throw, which are like Pretty good all the time. Never really bad to have. So yeah. Let's actually get into the tier list itself. Tier list is here. And let's get rid of this and this. Okay. Move it over a little bit. All right. So again, going over the tiers themselves, one is the cards that are you're happy with and pretty much all of the important fights in Act 1, the elites and the bosses. Two, it becomes a little bit more situational in some of these fights, but overall is pretty powerful for you. Three is the extremely situational, but you take if you need that like extra damage or in Catalyst's case, which is the only one. Here, you take if you feel ahead enough to take it, or you're, like, you don't feel behind against, like, Knob and Sentries, and you have a good boss for it. And then there's the fourth tier, there, which is mostly the skills and defensive cards. Because Gremlin Knob exists in Act 1, it's very, very hard to add too many skills at the beginning. And then there's the, like... Very, very situational damage cards, which are, yeah, it's, you take them when you need them, but you don't really feel happy taking them for the most part, and you take them when they fit. And then there's the cards that are almost pretty much useless. Calculated Gamble, I, I like the cards, I even debated putting it within this group, but everything else is pretty useless as far as Act 1 goes, and for most of the run, honestly. Even past Act 1 for some of them. But yeah, I think we touched on a lot of the uh, Tier 1 cards. These cards are just good in every single fight. Uh, Front-loaded damage and backstab, amazing. Being able to scale your damage outside of um, Poison with Terror is absolutely amazing. Like, you just can't do the Lagavulin or the knob fight in reasonable time without it, and you can't do the hexagos fight in reasonable time without the damage either. And I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be able to go through the phases of Guardian as well without Vulnerable, and it gives you some extra burst for uh, Slime Boss. Dash is absolutely amazing, 10 block and 10 damage, and one card. I mean, you literally want it in every single fight, 
in every single important fight, you're happy with dash. Uh, poison stab is just good damage and poison, and even late game, it strips an artifact. Can't really complain too much. Unless Agony, zero cost damage, really, really nice. Predator, two cost damage that draws you cards, which helps you better spend your energy later as well. So it's good at spending your damage up front and helps you get at spending energy on damage up front and helps you spend your energy better the next turn as well. Dagger Spray maybe even is even supposed to be at the beginning of tier two here. Um, but AoE is nice. Uh, sentries can be a kind of difficult fight if you don't have great front-loaded damage. It helps you with the hard pull fights of um, the gremlins and the slimes. Helps you against slime boss. It's an okay upgrade. Not great against Lagavulin, but pretty reasonable against every other of the important fights. Uh, quick slash and dagger throw, you can't really complain about them. Decent damage and draw card. Yeah, I, I mean, you need damage at the beginning, get back to one, so you take it. Uh, Noxious Fumes is very, very good against everything except for Gremlin Knob, like I said before. And is a good card later on as well against, like, all the longer fights, all the bosses. Ships Artifact against the Heart, Donu Deca, and Akkor Leads. Just very, very good. Deadly Poison... Good uh, poison card. Okay against Snob. Okay against uh, okay against Snob. Really bad against Sentries and really good against Lag of Woolen, which is kind of the reason why Silent is known for having the worst Act One. Like Deadly Poison is a very good card for her for most of the run. Yet it's so polarizing and like a rock paper scissor esque manner against the three main important fights that you're worrying about at the start of your runs. So it's it's really, really difficult for her to it can really, really depend on what elite you get as well, which you don't really have control over. Uh, all out attacks, AoE and front loaded damage. It kind of just falls off later for a class that has well-laid plans. You don't really want to be discarding, which is why I have it like lower than Dagger Spray, even though it does like two more damage front-loaded. There's Masterful Stab, which is really good front-loaded damage and will cost zero a pretty good amount of the time. Skewer helps you put your energy into damage, which Silent can have trouble with. Slice is just a zero cost card if you're on three energy still and you still need some damage. I would recommend it. Uh, Sucker Punch weak is good. Well, it depends. Having more control over your turns and being able to play cards at the right time. Obviously great. Uh, flying knees, just more damage. Footwork, you start with five base defense. Pretty good and you have a lot of defensive cards like backflip, escape plan, leg sweep, deflect comes and then there's the ones like a dodge and roll and blur which can carry the block over really really good later and very very good against the longer fights of like Hexagos, Guardian, uh, Lagavulin, and Sentries. Heal hook is pretty situational considering your main sources of weak early are probably going to be sucker punch and leg sweep which you don't always... I mean, like Sweep, you probably want your first one for the most part, unless it's contesting like good damage. And Sucker Punch, you don't always want, but you take. So it's pretty situational, maybe even belongs at the beginning of the next tier. Uh, Bane is a lot of damage when you have Poison, or a pretty, very mediocre card when you don't. And then Bouncing Flask I have at the lower end of this. It's a very, very great damage card, especially on 4 energy, but it's not great against sentries. It's okay against Snob, but it's also a skill. And it's pretty much great against every other thing, except for maybe Slime Boss. It's not so amazing against. Escape Plan's always good outside of Gremlin Knob, Sneko, and Choker. If you're at the point where you're not really worried about Knob anymore, it would definitely take escape plan there's almost no downside and then like sweep weak is really nice and it's a pretty 
good block card. And then I'm not really going to touch on the fifth tier at all. Four is uh, skills and block cards that you take as needed. Uh, couch ups is good against uh, Guardian and Couch ups good against Guardian Hexagus. These three are take as needed or when they fit. Like Flechettes has points where it's really, really good. Eviscerate has points where it's okay. Choke. I mean, you'd rather not play Choke at all, but I guess there's times where you get, like, Toxic Egg and Cloak and Dagger and stuff like that. Uh, Catalyst, I already touched on how situational it can be. Infinite Blades is kind of bad against Gremlin Knob. It's either 1 energy 4 damage, 1 energy 8 damage. Mostly between those two. And if it's 1 energy 4 damage, it's really, really bad. Uh, Crippling Cloud is mostly good against Hexagos and a little bit Guardian. But, and I guess, um, it's good against Lagavulin as well. But outside of that, it's a very, very situational card for Act 1. And it costs a lot of energy. If you have 4 energy, go for it. If not, probably hold off. Uh, Riddle of Holds would be a great damage card, except for it's really, really bad against Lagavulin. As soon as you go to one debuff, you're, it's down to a one damage. It's down to a five damage for two costs. Really bad. Uh, Blade Dance is a skill, and it only does eight damage. Like, compare it to these two, it's like really, really bad and compared to Dagger Throw and Quick Slash. Uh, Sneaky Strike, I mean, if you really have to and you really need damage, go for it, I guess. Would not highly recommend. Um, Cloak and Dagger. It's not horrible against like uh, sentries and Lagavulin. You'd probably want it. But against um, Gremlin Knob, it's pretty bad being a skill. Against Guardian, it's not great since you have to play the attack as well. It's pretty good against Hexagos as well. And I guess it's a better block card if you're going up against Slime Boss, but not not great at all. And yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. Uh, if you like this video, found it informative, make sure to like and subscribe. You can catch me playing live runs and ask questions over at my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash turnsmhs. Also, during for the rest of September, uh, the, it's only a week left, but uh, September is going on where you can get a 20% to 30% discount when you subscribe to the channel and help support me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll give you some links to some other information, some pictures from the video. If you want to look at it after watching the video and get the explanations of things and you just want to like look back at it and have it as a reference, I'll link those things down below as well. Thanks for watching.